Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paratopic. A surreal faux PS1 horror game in which our job is to smuggle contraband VHS tapes across a border. And I only know that from reading the Steam page. I honestly have no idea what this game is actually about. But from the sound of it, it seems like it's got a very dreamlike feel, and maybe a bit of a dystopian slant to it as well. I'm not even going to do a whole intro, I'm so curious to see what this is. A whole bunch of you on the Discord recommended this, so let's go. It has no save feature and must be completed in a single sitting, oh boy. You have an enemy, friendo. I- oh, I'm actually looking around in first person. Uh, what? We got a call about you. Undeclared goods, they said. I don't know what you're talking about. Then why did a concerned citizen feel the need to warn us about you? Silence. What, nothing to say? Oh, why am I being interrogated in a tunnel? I need to see my lawyer. You think you're so smart. Okay, I guess the Constitution doesn't exist in this universe. We're pretty full up. Busy night and all. No cameras out here. You think your lawyer's gonna stop me from checking out these tapes? Lawyer. <laughs> Smugglers like you slip through the cracks all the time in processing. Nobody's gonna save you. Well, I don't know enough about this world to know what he's talking about, but I know that I certainly don't want him to see those tapes. But what would be on them? Am I to imagine that the silent parts are me? See, the store page describes this as a surreal experience, but I'm kind of starting to wonder if it's not intentionally dream-inspired. Because it's showing me these images that seem to fit the mood of the world, even if they don't seem to make literal sense. For example, this body being eaten on the pavement outside, all while these shadow figures in the diner don't even seem to care or mind. An interrogation taking place in a long, dark tunnel where we don't even understand what we did, but we know we're in trouble? And that conversation we just had, it was like dialogue in a dream, where it has all the beats of a conversation that seems to be moving in a regular flow, but the actual words are so disjointed. Like, it seems to be moving from one topic to the other while being about the same thing in a way that's intuitive. Well, let's grab our gun and our bullets. How oh, we load them up one at a time. You will follow these instructions. You will not deviate. You saw what happened last time. You will be professional. Why me? There are debts. They will be paid. They're not my debts. They're yours now. We cleared this up 
twice. Be professional. Life works out better that way. I'm just trying to choose the answers that give me the most, like, information. Good. A professional response. You won't be picking up the tapes here. We've left them in your apartment. We have a key. You should have told us, though. About what? You don't need to play stupid with me. Oh. Yes. Not a good look. We knew, of course, but we expected you to be professional with us. You must be completely open. But you knew already. We demand your loyalty and discretion in all matters. And we've no choice but to acquiesce. They're like dogs. Sometimes you have to throw them some scraps. We've given you some scraps to share. I really like the way this camera is changing as we have this conversation. It's kind of like how in a dream you'll tend to focus on certain details, see things from perspective that don't necessarily make sense as your own point of view, but it still is your point of view. Cross the border and deliver the goods to the regular places. Whatever you do, don't watch them. We'll know if you do. Well, what if I rewind? Yes, sir. Alright, we can aim down the sights roughly with right click. It really reminds me of the way a dream makes intuitive sense, even while the events themselves are entirely nonsensical. Now what are these? I can sort of look at them by holding left click, but I can't read the papers or understand the symbols on these cards. Well, let's go, I guess. Can we explore the building itself to any extent? Okay, I guess we just robbed the place? You know, besides the dream logic angle, it's going to be really hard for me to come to a consistent narrative with this commentary. Maybe, maybe the best way to experience this is to watch it like a David Lynch film, or more specifically, like something like Inland Empire. Not try to question it too much, not try to understand the story logically, but just to kind of relinquish myself and be along for the ride. Look, there's a dent in the floor and high ceilings with a grate above. Almost like being at the bottom of a drain, but it takes the image of a hotel lobby. Look, we can actually see into the shaft through the open door. up, I suppose, but I'm still not quite sure what this has to do with smuggling tapes. Oh, look at this rundown old place. And I think I just heard what sounded like maybe muffled conversation through the wall. 
Hello? I guess this is where we live. We've got to return to our apartment to pick up the tapes. Occupied? Oh, what is this? There's like some kind of like mold or plants growing back here behind the wall. Oh, there's a layer of smoke covering the entire upper part of the halls. Some men were here earlier, got into your apartment, and didn't recognize them. Oh, that was just a friend. Friend dropped off something big for you. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Uh -huh. You're the first somewhat normal looking person we've seen so far. Anything else to explore? No. So this is all my apartment is. Uh, the green and brown coloration makes this whole world just feel toxic. It's not just her cigarette. There's a layer of smoke wafting over the upper part of the floor everywhere we go. Uh, the whole thing just feels like you want to hold your breath. There's the tapes. It's tapes. It's tapes, isn't it? Uh, you need something? You need another one. I shouldn't. When has that ever stopped you? I didn't know. You don't know anything. I'm not supposed to. You've always been good to me. Come on, I'm starving. I really shouldn't. I reckon you don't want nobody hearing about your friends. Can't you watch the one I copied last time? The dialogue is so interesting here. It's like when... It's like when you don't understand what's going on in a dream, but your mouth just kind of goes on its own, and you're kind of impressed at yourself for being able to maintain pace with the conversation, even though you don't understand what's happening. Used it up. Just static now. You've got a whole lot there now. Just one tape, and I won't say a thing. No, I can't. Who's gonna miss just one? They will. Don't be an idiot. They found out last time. You still owe me. You can't change my mind. I will. And on the road we are. Oh, we're actually controlling this. Driving down the empty, desolate streets of this city at what looks to be sunset. You know, that actually had elements of a dream conversation, and I am going to be on this train the entire time, where you're kind of stuck in this loop of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, back and forth, where you know you need to stick to a certain goal or you need to keep something secret, but a person just keeps insisting, and it's this repetitive conversation... Can we speed up a little? Oh, we can. Just a little, though. And it seems like we do actually have a working speedometer. What do these buttons do? A uh, little music for our drive, eh? She said I used it up, only static now. And so it's doing that sort of dream logic thing where certain objects can take on a value that don't necessarily apply the way they would in the real world. So in this case, uh, tapes are almost being considered like a resource that can be expended, like food or drugs. That's really strange, but it almost sort of makes an intuitive sense. You don't want a tape to degrade to the point where it only shows static. But in this case, static is given a value almost similar to finishing like a box of food. OK, 
Okay, and we can slow down. Up. Bump the side a little bit. It's never call. Every time. And it can swallow call. It's the whole galaxy. I also kind of like the idea of having the dialogue. I mean, not in that instance, but I like the idea of having the dialogue be something that's more. I don't know. I, I guess like garbled while still sounding like speech. And yet we have the text to let us know what they're saying. It seems like it could have been voice acted normally, but by doing it like this, it gives us that more dream logic feel where it has the beats of a conversation and you understand what's being said without the actual sounds making any sense. Almost like how in dreams you can sort of intuitively understand what amounts to Simlish. Oh, I guess we've decided to stop for some snacks then. Now we can pick them up and look at them, but we can't take them with us. Hmm. You know, this is a vibe that I really like. Oh, maybe it was Sunset. A convenience store where the lights are dimmed, except for the brightest ones being over the cashier. I actually kind of like this, in a creepy and cozy sort of way. I might actually appreciate something like this on a long road trip. <laughs> I almost kind of want to hang out here for as dark and dirty as it looks. My favorite is spicy shrimp ramen. But we're out. Find everything okay? Uh, I need something to keep me awake. Yeah, we've got 12-hour Spitfire, Beeslebub, and Auntie M's old remedy. Anyone you'd recommend? I'd go with Auntie M's. She makes it over in Rio Laredo. Are you sure she doesn't make it over the rainbow? Local stuff, then? Family, too. This won't give me a heart attack or anything, will it? <laughs> it's totally safe, yes. And what's it taste like? She's got a lot of flavors. Strawberry, gooseberry, blackberry. Which one you want? Strawberry, I suppose. Vending machine is over there in the far corner. Self-serve. Alright, I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. Well, that was a bit of a friendly interaction. Did I get it? Uh, I may need your help on this. I can't... Come on, I heard myself put the coin in. I want my Auntie M's. Okay, it's starting to resist me. But I still want my Auntie M's. Hey, dude, your thing's broken. Oh heck. That thing broke down again? What are you reading? It's a book by some guy named Eric. It's about how aliens are better than us. <laughs> aliens are better than us? Yeah, basically. Aliens can travel between planets, right? So they must be smarter than us. And they haven't enslaved or colonized us yet, right? So they must be better than us. Huh? Good point. Yep. I'm almost done with the book. There's all sorts of stuff in here I didn't know. Did you know the pyramids south of here are dormant alien nests? Pyramids? Yeah, pyramids. Rio Laredo National Forest. They don't look like pyramids to me. Just hills. But the Forest Service says they're pyramids. The Mormons tried to claim they own the property, but they lost the lawsuit. 
this is doing that thing where it's just kind of like throwing different ideas and topics at you that you would wake up and realize, okay, these are all things that I just heard about in the past couple of days. You were saying they're better than us? Yeah, not just technologically, but also morally and spiritually as well. Spiritually? Wouldn't the existence of aliens dif disprove God? Uh, I don't think necessarily, so I guess morally. Consider this. Rich people really seem to like butting into other people's business, right? Like, it's not just tax-exempt cynicism. So they do donate more to charity. Yeah. Successful people think poor people are stupid or morally inferior in some way. They perceive their success as a moral success, and the failure of others as a moral failing. Which means that they feel they have the right to judge, and in some cases shun people who are less fortunate than they are. You're saying people innately believe in karma? More or less. Which means they believe their success, earned or no, gives them the right to instruct others. Precisely. What does this have to do with aliens? Aliens are all one tribe. They don't think of themselves as better than anyone, and they don't try to make anyone's life worse than it already is when the person is clearly in pain. So aliens possess empathy. And very few humans do. Ah. Will that be everything? Actually, I think I might be passing through late on my way back. Any place good to stay around here? Well, there's not much around here. Super 16 burned down a while ago. There's the Mesquite and the Ranchero. They're both down the highway a couple miles. Big signposts. Ordinary chains, really. Nothing special. The Super 16 burned down? Yeah. Bummer. That was my usual stop, or I always meant to stop there. That waffle sign, man. I like waffles. Oh, yeah. Best waffles in the county. Possibly the world. Never tried to stop anywhere else. Well, it ain't waffles, but you can buy four ounces of jerky for ten bucks. Local deal. Local deer. It's a steal. Uh... Okay, four. Filthy lie. I'd rather eat pancakes, honestly. Deer jerky sounds good. I hit the wrong thing. I hear that. Your friend filling up out there still? What do you mean, my friend? Huh? Where are you headed? Gonna meet some friends for some buggy driving. Hmm. I uh, used to have me one of them buggies. Yeah? Yeah? Nothing like the rumble of the motor and the flutter in your heart when you take a jump. I hear that. Well, time for me to get going. And just like that, after that surprisingly deep conversation with the convenience store attendant, we find ourselves back in the car just on the side of the road in the middle of a black void. My heart, like, practically stopped when he said, your friend done filling up? It's like when you're taken aback by new elements almost being retconned into the story of your dream. No tapes, just a camera. So... Is this maybe the border? Like, we park here and then cross through the forest? We do have a sort of limited sprint ability, so we'll make use of that here. It is starting to form sort of a more coherent story, but it's doing so in a thoroughly dreamlike way. Sort of introducing elements out of left field, Speaking of left field... Oh. I can take pictures myself. And it looks like there's a cabin down there. Oh, and I can zoom in as well. 
Sometimes it turns yellow. And when I took that shot, the birds scattered. Oh, this is beautiful. I can't seem to acquire pictures of you. Hmm. It looks like I filled two out of six dots. Maybe there's some reason why I meant to photograph all of these? See, I love this. I love how my goals and ideas, the mood changes so completely from scene to scene, all while simultaneously remaining on a specific thread. It really is like just a playable dream. Okay, I, I want to fill up my camera. I want to get pictures of all these birds. But what happens when we get them all? Before we do that, let's head over and try and access this cabin. The flowing creek is shallow enough that we can run right through. Now what's going on in here? Some old cans and a mattress. Looks like someone was living here. Will persistence pay off? This is a very mysterious door. Hmm. A bunker. Wait, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't investigate this until I've photographed every bird. I need to know what this is about. There's more back here as well. well. We'll head to the bunker last. I'm just so worried about triggering things and not getting to see everything. There you are. Did you fly between the shutter going off, or did you just disappear completely? And what is the story with this pink one? Did I get it already or something? Oops. A sound just played when I took that picture. Here's the other side, but it doesn't look like we're gonna find anything different. All we can do is head down into that bunker, finally. Such a weird contrast, you know? It seems to be demonstrating some kind of value in nature and attributing a negative value to having it overtaken by cities and smog and pollution. I mean, it's not really something that the story itself is going into so far, but maybe it'll be a theme. But now that dull green overtakes us once more. And while that beautiful landscape was nice while it lasted, I think it's back down into the dirt. Deeper than the dirt. I'm having flashbacks now to No One Lives Under the Lighthouse. What is this place? And what is this thing? It's like a metal ball enclosed in some mesh. Door back here that we can't interact with. And a hole going even deeper. I'm starting to think maybe this is our tunnel that allows us to sneak across the border. Gotta get this place up and running again, I suppose. Oh, hello. 
I didn't see you there. My name is Dr. Algernon Kane. On behalf of the power company, I'd like to welcome you to our humble project. You're here because you believe in the future. That makes... We are, all of us, working towards the future. Though our roles may be very different. Fight for a better tomorrow. Your supervisor will brief you in more detail after this message. Thank you once again for the sacrifices you've made. Because of you, the future is bright. Now, do we maybe have to jump down here? It's actually not letting me. Can't climb down the ruins of that ladder either. Do we just leave? Can't seem to open that door. I honestly have no idea what to make of what we just saw. I'm just now realizing that looks to be a windmill in the distance. I'm wondering if we don't maybe get something for taking pictures of the birds for, you know, starting up the what, what, whatever that was down there. Howdy, bird. Weird how they scatter when you press the shutter. Oh, there's a road along the cliff. Towers in the distance, and... I just had a that's no moon moment. Are those just shadows, or is that whole hill some kind of giant structure? That's a little bit weird. I do not like the sound of that rusted metal grinding against itself above us. Somehow not being able to see it makes it feel so much more like this is going to be the moment it all tumbles over the edge. We're back on the road? The story seems to be doing a lot of jumping around in time. Going to different points in our smuggling trip, opening the game after our smuggling trip apparently ends in failure. And we've still yet to learn what these tapes actually do. We know they're desirable in some way. But I just love to know what the logic of this world is. I'm sort of starting to piece it together, I feel like, but there's still a lot more to understand, or maybe I'm not meant to understand it. Oh, look at how tall those billboards are. Even our headlights have a greenish tinge to them. It's like it wants us to think that everything about these cities is dirty and dead, while nature feels, like, refreshingly normal. I also can't tell, but it seems like it might be slowly getting darker. And I'm very aware of just how empty these roads are, how I'm the only one on them. Ugh. I'm tempted to look around during the drive, but if I take my eyes off the road for more than a second, I'll go into the guardrails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's getting darker, like the sun's disappearing below the horizon. 
But is this before or after we entered the convenience store? If any kind of linear timeline even matters. The music becoming more anxious, the sky becoming darker. Even the road ahead, despite all these lights, they don't seem to be doing very much. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm being swallowed, but I can only watch as I do it to myself. Strange thin towers on the horizon. I'm not even talking about the billboards. Oh, these... Well, now we continue our morning journey. More shipping containers. And it didn't have the indicator that that would do something. And with those musical stabs, I am immediately convinced that there is something out here looking for me. Almost like dream intuition, knowing the chase is on even before you've encountered the monster. Knowing what the monster looks like even before you've encountered it, although... I'm afraid I don't have quite that intuition here. I guess this was at one time some kind of shipping route. Now unofficially in use by me. Let's move under here. I mean, we are smuggling, right? The point is not to be seen. Oh, there's a weird building up on that cliff. Why are all these shipping containers just abandoned and left about? The tracks just terminate right here. But we can cross over. I want to spend some time exploring before I go up there, because it seems like even seeing unnecessary things is rewarded. That's a camera. Yeah, I see you too. It is moving too. I didn't even notice the one on the other side. This place is under surveillance? And what is this thing? Some kind of hatch that leads downward? Most of these aren't activated. They don't have the lights. They're not moving either, but the one over there does. I misinterpreted the soundtrack at first. This isn't a soundtrack of The Chase Has Begun. It's more simply what it did to me, which is the sound of paranoia. I know I don't want to be seen, and I know that someone is seeing me. Well, let's climb this cliff, I guess. This movement is kind of slow, even in the sprint mode. I can toggle it by pressing shift. There's a slower walk and a sprint, but the sprint is what would be the walk in most games. Now, what does this building have in store for us? Unauthorized personnel keep out. Is there someone there? I think that's a person. It's hard to tell with the pixely graphics.
Oh. Hi! Was I not meant to do that? Was that me getting caught? I mean... We saw those shadow figures in the diner before, but... What do they represent? Normal people? Government spooks? We're now continuing our nighttime drive on the highway. And with how close that darkness is, with how pathetic our headlights are... It feels like I'm just kind of sprinting into the darkness, waiting for some obstacle to come flying out at me, but I'm helpless to do much about it. I can slow... almost to a stop. But that's not what I want. Seems we're getting into a more rural area because we're no longer seeing the billboards and streetlights replaced instead by the power lines. No more tall structures silhouetted against the sky. Oddly enough, it does make me feel safer. Even the headlights have taken on a more bluish tinge than green. But the soundtrack is nevertheless anxious. I guess going down the road alone knowing that I'm the only one out here to stop and I am carrying contraband. What you say we listen to some tunes? Maybe not buildings, but certainly some large objects off to our side. And somehow hearing upbeat music juxtaposed against that soundtrack makes things even worse. It's the kind of thing that would be relaxing were it not for that feeling that something's wrong. This whole game so far just has such an impending feeling of doom. And it's not even just because we know we're going to get caught. It's everything about this, from its architecture to its characters to its dialogue. It all just feels like sickness. An air that the end is coming soon. Oh, we're going up over a hill. That actually made my stomach drop a little bit. Unexpected after so long of that not being a thing. I'm going to slow down to be more careful on this terrain. Oh, this is not good in this darkness. There's that moment as we crest the hill where we're completely blind to what's in front of us. Not that having a clear view with our headlights is all that much better. What other moral wisdom have you, sir? You filling up on four? Yeah. Who are you traveling with? I'm on my own. Sure, right. You're not from around here. What makes you say that? Folks around here wouldn't need to ask about burgers. I haven't lived here in a long time. No kidding? Why'd you leave? I needed work. Find any? Little of this, little of that. Very descriptive. And what can I say? I'm a poet. Are you really? No, that was a joke. You aren't very funny. Well, poets aren't supposed to be funny. What's there to do around here? Would you be interested in a giant ball of twine? I could lie and say, no, I am not interested in giant balls of twine. Sure, I've been known to enjoy a giant ball of twine or two in my time. 
Well, it's not the world's largest bulb twine or anything, but they thought it was for a long time, until they found out it wasn't. Plus, no one's sure how it got here. It just showed up one day. Showed up. Yeah, this was about ten years ago. A big ball of twine showed up in the park downtown in that big gazebo. Probably a prank or something. Like I said, though, it wasn't just a big ball of twine. What do you mean? Well, they thought it was a big ball of twine, but someone found some yarn on it, too. So it's big, but it's also not 100% twine. And it's heavier than it should be. Nobody knows why. It just showed up? Yeah. This was about ten years ago. A big... Okay, we've read this already. And we can actually just get caught in a loop. What happens if we follow this loop for a while? Alright, what else you got? Well, there's the milk store, the state park, the ghost carnival, and the museum. A ghost carnival? Yeah. We used to have this old carnival that would travel the state every summer. Then winter, just outside of town. Anyways, the lady who owned it got sick, so she had to set... She had them set it up on, an, on her farm. Then she died, and everyone just kind of moved on. The kids say it's haunted. What about the milk store? Yeah, it's a store, but they only sell milk. Milk products and milk accessories, all of which I can ask about. Yeah, like milk bottles and milking pails and such. Cheese, yogurt, you know. And milk. It comes out of mammals. The milk store has pretty much any kind of milk you could want. They own a farm out in the county, and they have all sorts of animals that make milk. You can buy the milk at the milk store. Okay. No, that isn't all we've got. Well, what's there to do at the state park? Hunting and fishing, I guess. Camping, too. Drugs, maybe, if you're into that. And the museum? Oh, yeah, it's real neat. I don't know if you remember the electrical company, but there's lots of stuff people find in the woods sometimes. They bring it back and put it in the museum. It does weird stuff sometimes. Hmm, I too have encountered the electrical company. What kind of weird stuff? Just weird stuff. You should check it out yourself. This guy has surprisingly deep conversations and all the while gives no detail and raises more questions than answers. Well, time for me to get going. Yeah. Looks like your friend has finished fueling up. Thanks. Need anything else before you go? Well, no, but, uh... Do you guys get much business these days? Being off the highway helps. When the electrical company shut down, that didn't help us none. Wasn't there some kind of accident? Yep. Must have been 14 years ago now? But nobody really knows what went down? Nope. Well, I can't stay here forever. I better go. You two drive safe now. And here's the stick up once more. Let me just uh, grab those tapes from you. What, am, was it, what is it that I'm doing here? Do I... Do I have to do it? Infinite ammo, huh? I can't expend it. Defy my orders. Alright, you asked for it. Only now I can take this stuff. I can play them. But what happens if I do?
they play only static. What happened to you? I can't move! I... Be seeing you, friendo. He called us friendo at the start. We're armed again. Back where we were before, but... But now I think there is something else out here. Okay, what are we doing? Are we meant to fight this time instead of just taking pictures? Was it because I tried to take pictures that things went the way they did? And... And what was the difference between the tapes that were marked with a red label and the ones that weren't? I don't see our guy here now, but there is something there. What are those symbols on the side of the wall? They... They look like the ones in the main menu. It's over? That's the end? I have so many questions. Is that the body of the character that arrived with the camera? I assume so. So the character I was playing as with the gun and the one with the camera are two different ones. I, I have so much that I was waiting for more information to try and contextualize and I feel like I have to do it all at once now I mean look there were repeated references to the idea that we were possibly playing as two people for example the convenience store employee constantly saying like okay your friend out there is done fueling up the constant jumps back and forth to things that don't seem to jive I'm just gonna wait until the end of the credits and then try to figure out what I'm doing here. this. I'm getting a whole bunch of achievements in the bottom right right now. I'm starting to think these are probably all related to things we did in gameplay. In which case, there's a whole bunch we didn't do. I can't seem to select them. Hmm... Okay, well, I don't know what a lot of these are. 
I'm imagining this is due to me interacting with the cigarette in the ashtray in the lobby in the beginning. The birds probably have taken pictures of the birds. So much of this I just can't understand. One of these is probably restoring power underground in the shack. Like, look, all of those cameras there seem to imply that I was led there for a reason, right? Like, it's almost like whatever happened to me is something that they wanted to get on film. And if we take this literally, it seems like the security guard watching the tape caused whatever happened to him. But then why would that be the case if these tapes are sought as some kind of drug? Maybe tapes of whatever happened to the character with the camera somehow caused this? Like there's some kind of ritual that has some effect on recordings of the event? I honestly think that the only way I can sort of start to understand this is to just play it again and play through it with the knowledge of what I've already seen. I hesitate to even call it knowledge, but let's go. See, this is weird. I was thinking before that the gun and the camera are different people, yet here they both are on the table at the beginning. Unless maybe we're actually... Maybe it's not two perspectives, maybe it's three? Because look, this is the guy we shoot at the end, right? So... Maybe that's a different person over there. We, we are the ones smuggling the tapes, being sent by this guy. The person over there is gonna stop it once everybody leaves. Which leaves the person with the camera as... the third, but wait, but why is it on the table there? Oh, we can look in here. Uh... Some kind of pinkish material? Possibly meat? Uh, that's strange. This time I'm gonna try giving her a tape. The juicy one. You've got a good one in there. I want it. So it seems like watching these tapes, like, causes mutations or something. And this is somehow desirable? I've just realized, uh, the tapes are no longer in the seat next to me. I don't know when that happened, or if it had something to do with me, like, hitting the guardrails, but they were no longer in the seat while they were at the start of the trip. It's so cold here. Hmm, now he says they do exist. I've seen them. How do you know it was an alien? Well, I don't know for sure, but it didn't look like a person. Be sure you check out the electric rocks. Tourist attraction south of the border. I only just heard about it myself. And apparently it was some ancient ground for shamans who communed with beings from another world. Aliens, I'm thinking. Hmm. Well, there is something going on. See, all I can do is think back to the biggest info dump we have in this game. Which is that overly talkative convenience store employee? I mean, there's all this stuff going on out here with, you know, the tapes and the cameras, something resulting in the closure of this infrastructure. 
I guess what I'm wondering, if maybe the tapes don't originate here after something happened, and they're somehow related to aliens. And what they are is essentially people getting their hands on some kind of technology. I say technology, but it seems like there's almost an occult angle as well. I don't know. But I've kind of abandoned the dream logic idea, even though this game is expressed through what could be described as dream logic. I think if we can decipher this, there is a story here. Like a concrete story. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, hang on, hang on. I keep crashing when I look around. This time I have a gun in the seat in the second driving segment. Is this meant to imply that I'm now the person who's going to go out there and find the camera person's body? I mean, it seems pretty clear at this point that we are two or possibly three people. And now the gun is gone. What is the significance of our stuff disappearing from the seats? No, now the, now the tapes are back. What is this about? And also, I'm realizing that's the same... On the box, that's the same logo as we saw on the screens in the basement in the shack. What happens if we just totally wipe? Keep going like that. Can we do that? Every once in a while we hear that sound. I guess we can't totally get screwed up. Now the gun is back. What happens if we approach without the camera? Now you'll disappear anyway. It's weird, it's like these almost must be different characters, but also they take the same path. And objects are attributed to all three, but also like the contents of that seat change moment to moment, which could just be a way of communicating that, that all of them have made the same drive, but I don't know who we're meant to be at any given moment. When, when the gas station clerk says, like, is your friend done filling up? It seems like our dialogue options have our character kind of dismissing it as like, yeah, whatever. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody's meant to be out there messing with our stuff? No, now we can see whoever it is out there. Is somebody following us? I mean, before... Before, we didn't even see a car out there. Now this guy says, I think the plant was given to the aliens. <laughs> I kind of think this guy might be like partly right. That's the thing. Always goes back to aliens and oh, there's that symbol again. Couple owie. Oh, that is truly gruesome. There's even a different thing for hitting him in the head. Uh, okay, I want to use. And each time we do, we have to replay it. And we can shoot here. Unlimited ammo, presumably. So I'm now the same character who... I'm now the same character who shot the guy, but I'm coming here. Maybe I saw something on the tape that led me to come here? It seems like I'm trying to stop whatever operation this guy has going. But what's what led me here? Did I maybe learn something about this place from the tapes that I viewed in that office? There's something up there. Is that just a bug or... First, I thought it was one of those birds, but it only is there from a certain angle. Now, let's see. Did we get anything new? One shot, one kill. 
headshot. I'm not saying it's aliens. DUI and Peeping Tom. Okay, well, is that last one because we saw the girl watch the tape? I guess headshot and one shot, one kill are for getting the guy in the tape room. But I, I feel like I've... I feel like I've understood some more fundamental things, but not really the details, which is what I was doing this for. See, I didn't even realize until the end of the first playthrough that we were playing as multiple characters. Because what I was thinking the whole time was, okay, we're given the job to take these tapes, we're driving with them, we stop, take our path through the woods to get where we're going, taking some pictures along the way, I guess, and then something grabs us. It was only after we arrived as the one with the gun that we realized our character from before has died, apparently all on camera. And that was why I kind of played through this second time with the idea that these are different people. I mean, that's the only reason I can think of for the different perspective and shooting that guy presumably immediately after the conversation at the beginning. So, Here's what I'm thinking. We have the person whose job it is to smuggle the tapes. That's who we play as in the conversation with the guy. That's who we play as in the car. But we don't see again after that, I don't think. Well, we know that they get caught. That's what we know. We know that they get caught. I think the photographer is just kind of a random victim who has nothing to do with any of this. But then you have the third person who is trying to stop the tapes. Now, the nature of what these tapes actually are is still a little bit ambiguous. It seems like they're desired and causes mutations, but those mutations can also be bad. Then again, they're treated almost as analogous to drugs. So maybe they are bad, but do something good in the moment, but then that guard just kind of got completely wiped out. But if it's his job to stop smuggling, you would think he would know that this can happen, so maybe it was an unexpected outcome, but the TV spoke in his voice at the end and called me friendo, so I don't friggin' know. This is a weird fever dream, and I love it. Uh, I really liked speculating on this, and just the fever dream nature of how disorienting it tells this story. Creating a new world that's just normal enough that it's not so weird that you just lose yourself to La La Land. It's very much like a dream where you know things are weird, but not how weird they should be if your waking mind were there. You accept some things uncritically. Uh, but anyway, I'm sure there's more to learn. But that was Paratopic. I was tempted to go to the TV Tropes page to read about it, but I figured a second playthrough would be better. And it was. It enabled me to put more things in context and get sort of that interpretation I got by the end. But I still don't think I fully understood it. So if you guys have theories or ideas, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.